I really need to invest in an electric saw. Hi all, my name is Lee, welcome to the channel. So I've got my new milling machine. I'm gonna do my very first proper milling project. I am going to make some V-blocks. Now I haven't exactly worked out the way I'm going to make them, the best order of operations. I figure the best way to learn on the mill is just to get on and do it. So there could be loads of mistakes I'm making. Please let me know better ways to do things, but let's crack on. The first job I need to do is cut off two pieces because I want a matching pair of V-blocks, two pieces of mild steel that I'm gonna use for this project because that's what I have available. Unfortunately, I don't have any sort of electric saw, so I'm just gonna have to put some effort in and saw a one inch by two inch piece of steel. Let's get on and do that first. So I thought I'd try and face these off together to try and keep them uh, matching as much as possible. I also bought what I think is a bit of a comically sized face mill from a, a store in the UK. This is an 80 millimeter, so it's just on the edge of what this machine is supposed to handle, six carbide tips. It was a really good price, that's the main reason, and they didn't have the smaller one in stock. So I thought I'll get this one and if necessary, I could always remove three of the six cutting edges to uh, turn it more into like a fly cutter. But let's give it a go. Okay, so that seemed to work pretty well. The surface finish is pretty good. Feels good. You can see the, uh, some slight swell marks from the cutters, but it's smooth as anything. It's quite shiny. Well, I'm really pleased with how that worked. Let's carry on and square this off. So here are my two identical blocks machined. They're pretty accurate with each other because I machined them together, so I'm pretty happy with how these have turned out. Uh, but because this is my very first project, I want to try and still keep an element of accuracy, but also I want to try out some other skills like marking out a part. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to dry one of these up and I'm just going to put some uh, blue marker pen on it and try and mark the area that I'm actually going to cut just to get used to the process. So let's do that. So I've just used some angle blocks, 45 degrees, just to try and get it tapped in. Obviously the hard part here is to make sure both of these parts are actually parallel with each other. Feeling pretty good, and I'm just finishing tapping them in just to make sure. Yeah, they feel pretty good. And I'm just gonna sanity check it just to make absolutely sure. Hopefully you can see that, it's bang on 45 degrees, so I'm happy with that. Let's make the cuts. So the next job is I just wanna cut a slot right at the bottom of these blocks just because there's always a, a very tiny radius there and I want to make sure I can put square things in there easily. 
uh, rather than just round things. So just cutting a slot should make sure I don't have any issues with that. I'm just gonna make one more very light clean up pass and that should be that job done. So I'm just going to complete putting in the second V. I've already started there. I'm just using a 12 millimeter end mill. So let's carry on and get this finished. So for my first ever mill project, I think it's going all right so far. I'm quite happy with how they are. They, they seem square enough. All the edges feel smooth to the touch next to each other. I'm just holding the two blocks together. Um, so I think I'm ready now to put some other features on there. So what I think I might do is I might cut some grooves into the side. So I, in the future, if I need to clamp it somehow, I've got some grooves to put some sort of clamps inside. And the other thing is I want to chamfer all of the edges. But so far, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. So let's get on the mill and put those extra features on. So here we are so far. I've put some slots in there just so I've got something to clamp onto in the future if I need to put it on the mill table. They're looking great. I'm really happy considering this is the very first time I've used a mill. I think they're turning out okay. So the last job I want to do just to finish these, just chamfer the edges, the, the top and bottom square edges, just to make them a, a bit nicer to hold. And then I just want to go around with a file to clean them up. And once I've done that, I think they will be done and I can test them and, and see how accurate they are. I've made a few mistakes along the way, so I'm not expecting them to be that accurate, but it is my first attempt and these will still work plenty well enough for me for the foreseeable future. For a final time then, let's get them back on the mill and just champ for the edges and make them look nice uh, and then we can finish them off. So I've got a cheap countersink bit online and I'm just going to use that to chamfer the edges. I'm just going to do this by eye. So I've pretty much finished these now. I've just given them a very light filing just on the edges just to remove the last of the little burrs and things like that. Um, I think I might actually try and do some of that cold bluing. I do have a bottle of that and I've not really done much of that, so I might test it out on these just to give some level of protection. I'm not gonna bother trying to harden these. I don't have the equipment or the skill to do so. That would be a project in the future. But for now, I'm pretty happy with how these look. Uh, what I'm going to do now, though, is get the uh, 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 DTI, the dial test indicator, and I'm just going to see how accurate they are. Bearing in mind, I don't have a proper surface plate and I don't have a perfectly round bar, but I'll give it a test. If I'm within a tenth of a millimetre, I'll be happy, but let's see what they're like. So I'm not entirely sure the best way to measure these. I guess what I should do is, uh, on each one individually, if I put a bar in, and these aren't machined perfectly straight, so there could be variations in the bar. But if I test it uh, um, right next to the base and then about an inch away, uh, hopefully we can get a, a rough reading. So let's try one at a time and see what we come up with. So that looks about... about 12 on the dial, possibly. Then if I move it about an inch away and see what happens then. Ooh. Maybe about 14 on the dial, possibly. Right, let's try the other one. I'll try and keep the bar in exactly the same position on my finger, just so <laughs> I can try and take out some of the variations. And let's try the other one to see if we get a similar level. So 
So at about 11, move it to the end. Maybe about 12 again. I mean, I'm within four one hundredths, maybe five one hundredths of a millimetre. Uh, I think as a very first project, I'm really, really happy with that. And that should be plenty accurate enough for me for the time being. So what I'll do is I'll get some of the cold blue and let's just blacken these up a bit and we'll call that finished. Okay, so I've got my bluing solution. It says to use one part blue, three parts water. So that's what I'm done. I'm just following the instructions. Then I need to dip it in water and then I can just uh, dry them out and I'll put some oil on them. I've got a paintbrush as well, just to coat the parts, but let's see how this works. It's uh, pretty new to me, so I'll try it now. Okay, I'm not really sure on the, the dilution of the product. As you can see, it's, it doesn't easily go on there. I was expecting more of a reaction and a bit quicker. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just leave these in there for a bit longer and see what happens. Maybe I've still got some grease on them. I did actually wash them down with uh, acetone and I've not touched them. So hopefully most of the grease is gone, but there could still be a little on there. Actually, it is turning. It just takes a while. Okay, so there they are. My finished V-blocks, my very first milling project. I'm actually really happy with how these have turned out. I'm sure they'll get a lot of use until I work out they're not accurate enough and then I'll make some new ones. But for a very first time using a mill, I couldn't be happier. I've learned quite a few different skills doing this. So slotting, facing, uh, try to do a bit of accuracy, which I, I'm pretty successful at. I think I've found some of the limitations of my mill, which I will actually talk about in the next video. But for now, thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.